Arthur Brooks is a guy who's recognized as a world expert on human happiness, on what it takes for humans to be happy. In his book, Gross National Happiness, he says that the four greatest sources of happiness within human control are faith, family, friends, and work. The four things that you and I can impact and have control over with the, the greatest influence on our happiness are faith. He says people of faith are generally happier. Family, taking care and, and being around our family makes us happier. Friendship will increase our joy. And then meaningful work will make us happier. Those four things, faith, family, friends, and work. Now we just finished talking about family and in future messages, we're gonna talk about faith and work. In this one, I wanna discuss friendship. And I wanna use this message to encourage you to make it a priority, to prioritize friendship. And here's why. This is from one of my favorite quotes about friendship. The world is a dark and lonely place. It's often disappointing. The brightest sunbeam in it is a friend. Friendship halves our troubles and doubles our joys. When you get good news, the first thing you wanna do is share it with somebody, we all do. Do you have someone you can call who is going to be just as excited about your good news as you are? Right? And they're gonna double your joy by celebrating with you. Or the opposite, like when the bottom falls out of your life and things just get bad. Do you have someone you can call, it doesn't matter when or where, they're gonna show up, not expect to get paid, it's not a favor you have to pay back, they're just gonna help lighten the load and, and, and have your troubles and help you get through that. I really want you to have that, I, I sincerely do, and that's the point of this message. I'm blessed enough to have two friends. I have two. One of them is a guy named Eric, and uh, he has been with me longer than anybody except for my parents, and he knows me better than anybody except for my wife. He and I have been through a lot, a lot together. Uh, when my sister died, he was there to uh, grieve with me and uh, help cut my troubles in half. When I got married, he was there as the best friend, uh, the, my best man, you know, to celebrate and help compound my joy. He's been there through all of it. Now, if you're not sure if you have something like this, if, you, if you're part of a true friendship, I wanna offer six marks of a true friend. And this comes from a great book called Made for Friendship. He offers six marks of a true friendship. This is what it looks like. Right? The first one is love. Close friends love each other and hold each other in high esteem like with genuine affection. Right? Do you have someone in your life, not your spouse, but a friend whom you genuinely love? and you know that they love you. The second one is constancy. Close friends remain constant through the good and the bad. They stay steady. Uh, suffering is one of the greatest relationship revealers to let us know if we really have a good relationship. Suffering will do that because we often learn how strong a friendship is when we don't have anything to offer. And we also can learn how good of a friend we are when our friend doesn't have anything to offer us. Constancy is a, is a mark of true friendship. The third one is transparency. Close friends are honest and, and real with each other. You don't have to fake it with your friend. Like with your close friend, they already know who you are and they're still your friend anyway. You can be real with, with your close friends. The fourth one is candor. Close friends speak the truth to one another and provide genuine, real feedback. Do you have anyone in your life right now who is able to tell you the things that you may not want to hear? Or have you empowered anybody to tell you no? to speak into your life and give you some good, honest truth. The fifth one is empathy. You've heard me talk about this a lot. It's one of the things human beings need the most is empathy, being known by somebody else. Right? Well, a close friend has the ability to understand how you're feeling and, and read your emotions and pick up on what you're going through and adapt as necessary because a close friend really knows you. So the question for this one is, who does that for you? Right? Who knows you? I mean, really seriously knows you. Not the version of you that you give to everybody else, but who actually knows who you are. That's empathy. The final uh, one is trust. Number six is trust. Because close friends keep confidence and they have that foundation of trust. So for that one, I would ask you, who do you tell your secrets to? Who do you share information with that you wouldn't give anybody else because you know they're gonna keep that information confidential and they're gonna put it in a vault? All right, now regardless of what kind of friendships you may have, uh, I wanna close with a couple of suggestions. The first one is to prioritize friendship. Make it a priority. Right? We make time for what we value. And if you're always too busy to connect with people, then you're really missing out on friendship because friendship takes time. You can't microwave friendship and fast forward through it. Friendship takes time because you can't listen to someone in a hurry. You can't mourn with someone in a hurry. You can't celebrate with somebody in a hurry. Friendship takes time. 
The second suggestion I would have is to keep it close. Recognize that you're only ever going to have one or two close friends. You can be friendly with a lot of people, but that doesn't make them your friends. You're only going to have one or two really close friends, so aim for a small, tight group of comrades who are going to be there through the thick and the thin. And invest extra energy in that inner circle. Those are the people who should get the biggest chunk of your time. Keep it close. Number three is get face to face. Text messages and phone calls are no match for human contact. Make this a priority. I mentioned earlier that I have two friends. Well, here's my other one. Corey is a fellow chaplain. We met when we were stationed together in Oklahoma City. We've since moved away and both got stationed in other places, but we still, once a year, block out time on our calendar to meet together for a camping trip. And yes, the, the travel is expensive and the, the scheduling is never convenient, but our friendship is a priority and so we make it happen. Right? Get face to face. All right, I'll close with a quote from C.S. Lewis. He says, friendship is unnecessary, like philosophy or art. It has no survival value. Rather, it is one of those things which gives value to survival. Close, intimate friendships with a few close friends. That's where we go to find value and give value to other people. Friendship makes that happen, and friendship is worth the effort. Thanks.